Okay, so this is Patai, uh, Henry V, from the Royalist and Roundhead series by 3W. Um, this is uh, getting back into the battle at uh, turn 7, start of turn 7. Uh, this battle goes 11 turns, and um, <clears throat> this is a postscript. Um, had a lot of fun with this battle. This battle is definitely worth uh, replaying. Um, but before this battle gets wrapped up, um, I marked this uh, English men at arms right here to get back to this uh, this topic rules topic. Um, and this topic basically is emblematic of my experience playing this entire series. Um, the rules are, I don't know if they're so much bad as they're just so loose. Um, and it leads to a lot of, uh, a lot of questions, confusion, basically. Um, it, it obviously does not keep me from uh, coming back to play this game, this game series. Um, but here's here's an example. So the other uh, the other session, I was talking about uh, facing changes in an enemy zoc, and I think I think in the other session I concluded that I would be uh, very cons uh, interpret the rules very conservatively, and say that there is no movement within enemy Zoc, so therefore there's no facing changes since facing changes may cost movement points to execute. Well, upon further reflection, that just doesn't work. Um, looking at the rules again, the rules say that moving into an enemy Zoc a unit cannot move any further that movement phase. Uh, I'm remembering this stuff off the top of my head. I'm not going to dig it out to read it word for word, but basically uh, the rules say when you enter an enemy Zoc, no more movement that movement phase. So I interpret that now to mean when you enter the enemy Zoc, you're basically frozen when you first enter that enemy Zoc. But the rules specifically say that movement phase. So upon further reflection, I guess I thought, well, that opens up the possibility for movement in a later movement phase. And that actually um, works together with the leaving an enemy Zoc rules because you can clearly leave enemy Zocs. And clearly in some, because you can only move uh, through front hexes, uh, for non-skirmish units, you have to move through front hexes to leave an enemy Zoc in many cases, if not all, you would want to change facing before you moved out of the enemy Zoc. And to do so would be changing face within, within an enemy Zoc. So, long story short, to triangulate between different rules, I think that the way I'll play in the future is, if I can remember this, you move into enemy Zoc, during a movement phase, you're frozen in place. I think this means, and I do like the idea of you need to, you need to orient yourself and you, and you need to pay the movement allowance, possibly, to get yourself facing in the direction you want to before you enter the enemy Zoc, because once you do so, for that, for that movement phase that you enter the enemy Zoc, boom, you're frozen. Now, in the subsequent movement phase, you can face, uh, do facing changes and move out of Zoc if, if, if allowed to by, if otherwise allowed to by the rules. And to finally come back around to the original question, I think that if you start a movement phase and you're already in an enemy Zoc, I, it, it now seems reasonable to me that you can do a facing change. Um, yeah, you can execute a facing change. Um, I think that's how I'll go, and that's 
This this is a perfect example of <laughs> to play this series the the kinds of issues that will come up and to play the series. I mean, we are talking about a series that off the top of my head, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, at least forty, at least forty-one separate battles to play. I mean, for such an expansive system with a pretty cool um, command system. Um, I think in, interpreting rules and expending energy interpreting rules is a small price to pay. Um, and so that is, uh, that was a very fun first half of the Battle of Patai. Um, I think I would say the um, actually I, I would I would say that this is the start of turn seven. It goes through turn eleven. So it's the start of turn seven goes through eleven, and I would say that the battle is still even. Um, I think the English the English could have held uh, by held and could have eked out a victory by making the French. Uh, pay in blood, uh, and I also think that the French could have closed in both flanks, closed in on both flanks, and um, I also th I also think the French could have um, just demolished the English and 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 eked out a victory. So um, very fun, um, very fun in, in the sense of it was definitely not, you know steamrolling one way or the other. Another thing I'll say, I guess the last thing I'll say for, for now, is um, I think you I think you could have seen how the skirmishers, in this case the French, uh, English longbowmen and the French crossbowmen, I think you could see how they were roughly at least um, serving a real tactical purpose on the paper battlefield here. Um, I think you can see how they were softening up the lines. Um, I like that a lot. Now I will I will caveat that statement by saying that maybe, uh, since I'm playing solitaire against myself, maybe on both sides I was kind of making them operate his, historically as skirmishers, maybe. Um, and so maybe as a, uh, or maybe in a face-to-face -face game against an opponent who is aggressively exploiting the rules to win, um, maybe it would be a different outcome on that uh, in that regard. But I do like how the skirmishers seem to at least roughly uh, serve a um, historically true uh, role. Yeah, until next time.